The next item on our tour is considered extinct in nature and only found in active breeding facilities. And they are called the Mongolian wild horses. And I have a few of them coming into view in just a few seconds. Yeah, pretty much in front of us. We got more than half of their herd in front of us. So have those cameras out and about. And again, they'll call Mongolian wild horses because they are the only true wild horses in the world. They were never domesticated by man for any reason. And as you can see, there are some physical differences with these guys. Compared to the domestic horses, we are familiar with them. They have shorter legs, the more stockier, muscular body, and an erect band that goes from the back of their heads to the top of their shoulders. And it's like a kind of sticky movement. These guys are also missing the forelock. A forelock's a piece of mane that normally hangs over a horse's face. These guys just don't have that. They like their clean and cut look. And there's some genetic differences as well, but of course we cannot see that with the naked eye. Now again, they were never domesticated by man, but they do have a long, rich history that does involve them. So here's some information about it as we climb to the top of the hill. Six feet tall at the shoulders, ten feet long, and easily weigh in at 2,000 pounds. And there's an alpha male within the herd by the name of Eddie, Eddie Gower. And he is the proud father of nine calves in his herd during his lifetime, and he weighs in at 2,200 pounds. And also within the exhibit, I'm trying to keep my eyes off for them. They can't be a little shy. They blend in very well. I've got one of them right in the middle at the moment. It seems like my head is stretched out across the right hand side of the field. Oh, the raw antler deer coming into view. Look, yeah, the raw antler deer gets their names from the shape of both those antlers when they come into the room. Those antlers can't be managed from the shape of the deer. I don't see that on top of the lines. And it seems like it is a lady's day. I don't see that as raw antlers, but it is a juvenile male within their head, and he's beginning to grow those eyebrow-shaped antlers really soon. Now, with the Gower's large size and the suppressive horns they carry, nothing threatens them, and even they fold from a tiger. But ironically enough, what does threaten them and the Gower Hammer Deer is that most of their habits have a lot of the wild tiger and even domestic cattle disease which fall us in their crops with a losing all their wild space. Food. So, we have the wrong two that are part of what we call a species of wild tiger. Years old, weighs 
Oh, she was last seen wearing an orange coat in black stripes. So if you guys see her before I do, by all means, don't hesitate to shout her out. Oh, no, no, no. no, oh, okay, there we go. I spotted her laying down. So again, folks, remaining in seats, I'm going to take it nice and slow so everybody will get a great opportunity. Check out Sabina. Right now, she's on the right hand side. Right Did you see a small yellow tree laying down? You can see the white of her belly. So she's laying down, taking one of her 16 hour long cat naps. Now, Malayan tigers are one of the smaller subspecies of tigers that we do have here at the Bronx. We have Siberian tigers as well. And if you would like to see more tigers up close and personal, by all means, don't hesitate to go over to Tiger Mountain. Again, we have Malayan and Siberian tigers. They were a little young, but they were eating together in a small group. Because tigers are very secretive and solitary animals, especially when they get older, they are aggressive in their territory. So, this is why we only have one on the other one at any given time. And tigers only hunt when they are hungry, folks, and they like medium sized deer, pig, or misbehaved children. And they give you 40 pounds of meat from the kill, which we must have like a lot. That's like us eating over 160 hamburgers in a single sitting. No, we don't have size tiger. tigers would not eat for several days, and I don't think I would have either. Mm. Now, despite this secret lifestyle and great camouflage, they are incredibly dangerous. Well, about, <clears throat> only about 3,000 left in the world, with 1,000 of those being female. So here at the Bronx, we want a conservation society. We have partnered up with a big time conservation group by the name of Panther to help increase the tiger's population by 50% in a 10 year period. And we started this back in 2006. Now we're in the back end of the gallery exhibit. You actually look to the far right, you have that one juvenile bull that I mentioned. He's beginning to grow those antlers really soon. And we'll have a close up look at the rest of the herd as we swing by. And sometimes they even call them there for the pointy ears that they have on top of the head. So we're just going to watch these ladies watch us as we go. Now we're about to come into the back end of the first metal in the So we saw some of Vegas National Bird, the P. Fallon, one of the spotted deer. I'm going to try and see if I can find the rest of our inhabitants. They tend to be stretched out. Okay, if you look towards the middle, it's in the back left, they're all dead center. We have the axes there in the front. You can see they have those white spots on them. They're a little bit smaller than the taller deer that are right behind them. Those large honey colored deer behind them. You know them are called the Barasinga deer. And the word Barasinga means 12 times the 12 pointed in the Hindi language. When the middle of that species from the mature, they can have anywhere from 12 to 14 points in the atlas. I'm actually going to see a few of these Barasinga deer laying across the road the left hand side of this fence. So as you swing, you may see a few of them laying across this fence line. Now again, with India's National Bird, the Pea Valley, you may be familiar with them. They are the only three right now, but the things you know, only the males are beautiful. The females who are gray or green on their legs are called pea heavy. And when they love each other very much, they have little baby pea checks. You may notice a lot of these white looking sticks across the lawn in the zoo. These are the male's back feathers. It's an indication the breeding season is coming to a close and that these males in particular have already found the bees. If you see a peacock with his feathers, they will give him some encouragement and cheer him on. Hope they can find Lady Lily before the season ends. As we come on forward to our bamboo forest, we'll be on a little bit of an animal called a babarusa. The word babarusa means pig deer, and they eat a lot of lunch. There we go, a male babarusa, but I go to hickory eating some hay. Right away, look at this again. As we come to our next exhibit, we're going to look out for a few of our females with their little piglets. Oh, there you go, totally back off. Look at all the bees are. Enjoying themselves. Now, they're native to the island of Silver Waste is an incredibly invasion. Part of our great oh, that's not the way! Look at that great coloration of hairless body they have. They can't be hard to stun. But do not worry, folks, I promise you, you're not going to have trouble spotting this grand hairless beauty coming up on our tour. Now, again, they're really doing a great job. Just remain seated. Let's keep it to a whisper. It's not to spook happy here. Not as you know, we're going to get a nice up close look at her as we pass right on by. She's in the very beginning of the exhibit, so again, have your cameras out and out. She's enjoying some of the fall of the east of the world. Now, how can you hear her from your feelings as she weighs in at 10,000 pounds? To maintain her large weight, she has a little bit of time to fruits and vegetables that can eat over 200 pounds of hay. They drink over 60 gallons of water each and every single day. Elephants have a very important food. Guys, you gotta have the kids off the railing that it's not safe. Little girl in the pink in the back. 
Thank you. I say elephants have a very important tool in that it is their trunks, folks, no bones at all, but they do have over 40,000 muscles, more than the entire human body. And Asian elephants specifically have a fairly like unique tool in their trunks, which allow them to do anything as small as a blade of grass or a kind of tree with enormous force of trunks. But I don't make sure we'll get spoiled here at the bottom to the spa baths and pedicures twice a week, free of charge, courtesy of the keepers. As we say goodbye to Happy, we thank her so much for her up close and personal presence. We are now going to be on the lookout for one of our Indian rhinoceros by the name of Kelly. Now let's see, is she in the mud water? No, not in the mud water. Making sure she's not on time of the hell so we don't miss her. Right, she's on the other side, so that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and catch up with her and get a much better view from there anyway. Now, despite popular belief, folks, rhino skin is not armor plated. It is simply made of any fluids of skin which give it an armor look. And it's sensitive just like ours. They need protection for sunburn, inside bites, and the morning parasites. So we use the mud walls like the one we can have, so we're going to see another one. So I hope you keep your skin nice and cool. So if your kids do the same thing, like that food. <laughs> now, a few seconds, some of you may be able to see her from now. I'm going to try to head over to your right hand side. She's right in front of the rock formation. She likes to run up and down here. So I guess you can exercise. Now, she weighs in at 3,500 pounds and it can run up to 30 miles an hour. Now, guys, the train is going forward. Make a slight left. She's coming up to you. She's just behind some of the red bushes over here. Now, care for rhinos is one thing, folks, with breeding, that is a whole other challenge. But yeah. well, we're happy to say we've had 13 baby rhinos born here within the generations of years. There's another female rhino by the name of Penny. She had a baby girl, it was six of this year. So her baby was over seven months old. That baby was number 13 overall, and the second baby with an eyes. A toddler baby! Now, since I'm on the topic of babies, it is a very interesting next topic, especially those who are moms. Mothers to be or grandmas, you can take this to Indian rhinos are not as healthy as behind the tree. Months. No, they are pregnant right. for 16 months. That is a year and a half worth of pregnancy, and they give birth to a balancing 150 pounds. Right there, behind the tree. However, the only says with mom for two to three years, we will be completely independent. And we will only take 12 to 16 months. It's not bad, she does have to say about your college. As nothing compared to Asian elephants like Happy, they can be pregnant for 22 months. And despite such a great breeding group, many rhinos are still highly endangered. Where's that? 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 the Zambar deer. The males weigh in at 650 pounds and stand five and a half feet tall at the shoulder. No grow antlers over three feet long for the alpha males and normally they live by themselves while females live in small groups. So we're going to catch up to them in just a few seconds. But in the meantime, I do want to point out one interesting feature here within the habitats of the monorail. You may notice a lot of the trees do have wire wrapped around them. And these are sort of a very simple button purpose. Both the deer and the antlers species in the 